Hey everyone, today we're going to go through creating a revolved and shelled item that looks kind of like this. So this time I'm going to start with a new design, personally. If you have your other file still open from this activity, you could always create a new component. Um, but for right now, we're going to start with a new file. I'm going to hit create, new component. Alright, this is going to be our revolve shell. We're going to hit OK. It's going to automatically activate our component and we can start creating our piece. So first we're going to start with creating a sketch and we can choose either the front or the right. Either of these two will work for this shape. So I'm going to choose the right and then we're going to go through and we're going to create a sketch that looks like this sketch down here. Okay, so we can do this by just using the line tool because the line tool also includes this arc tool. All right, so we're going to grab our line tool here and we will try and remember some of our measurements. All right, so we'll see how we do. All right, if we start somewhere over here, this is going to, first one is going to be 35 millimeters. I'm going to hit enter. I can click our tool again. I meant to click instead of hitting enter, but that's okay. If I click to start where I want this line to begin or the curve, if I click again right where I started this and hold the cursor, okay, it'll start creating an arc. All right, we want this arc to be directly above the previous point. Okay, so these should be vertically in line with each other. If you saw how I kind of brought my cursor down to be in line with it and then moved it across, um, that's kind of how you can do it. I'll add in measurements in just a second since I'll need to go back and find them. But I do want to make another line that ends right above the first step that we made. So I'm going to make this line and then I'm going to connect this down to the bottom. Okay, if you notice, I still have the line tool on my cursor. I'm going to choose the escape key on my keyboard to get rid of that. And now we can get the rest of the measurements in here. So I'm actually going to grab this measurement. So I'm going to click and hold and drag it down below the shape just to get it out of the way. Otherwise, it's kind of sitting in the middle there. So what we're going to do to make the rest of our measurements is called the dimension tool. We haven't really used this one yet, um, but the dimension tool allows us to click on a shape or a line and add in a measurement. So if we go back and look at our sketch, all right, we have the 35 here. So let's add in our radius of 35 for our arc and our distance of 40 for that diagonal line. So we're going to click dimension, okay, which is up in our ribbon on the side of our create panel. If you don't see this, you may have to open your create panel to see sketch dimension down in the bottom. Or if you see here, you can use the D key on your keyboard as a shortcut. But for right now, I'm just going to come up and click it. I'm going to click on my arc. And if you see, it puts a number on your cursor, but it moves along with your cursor. If you click, it'll let you set it down and we can type 35. And hit enter. Okay, notice our dimension is still our, our dimension tool is still on our cursor, so we can click our diagonal arc. Okay, and if you notice, it depends on where we place our cursor, but it can give us varying dimensions. So if we brought it over to the side, we could do vertically. If we bring it straight up, we get side to side. But if we keep it kind of at the same angle, um, we can get that diagonal dimension that we were looking for. When we click that, we come back, we just double check. We know that it is 40. So we're gonna come in here and type 40, All right? And then our last two measurements, we have a 55 millimeter measurement from top to bottom. And then we do see a 10 millimeter measurement between the origin and that line. Okay, so I'll show you how to do both of those. We click back into our fusion. We have dimension still selected. We're going to click on our line here. Again, we have the measurement on our cursor. We need to click to set it down. We type in 55 and we can click enter. 
So our final dimension that we need is between this center, almost center line that we've made here and the origin point. So I'm going to click on that line and then even though it's got the number here, I'm going to bring my cursor over to the origin. You should see like a little white dot. When I click there, now if you notice, the measurement has switched from being the length of that line to the distance in between that line and the center dot here, our origin. So if I click, this one is supposed to be 10 millimeters. So I'm going to type 10 and choose enter. All right, this is our entire sketch for this shape. So we're going to choose finish sketch. All right, I'm going to click my scroll wheel kind of to move it a little bit around. And then what we're going to use is we're going to use a new tool for us, which is called Revolve. So Revolve is up in our Create panel of our ribbon. It's right next to Extrude. It's usually the second Create tool that we actually use. And this Create, uh, this Revolve tool, if you can see when you hover over it, it'll take a shape and it will spin that shape around an axis so you can get cylinders and other circular shaped uh, items. So we're going to choose Revolve. If you notice, since we only have one profile, it's already automatically selected our shape here. Um, and what our cursor is actually asking us to click on is the axis. So in this context menu down here, this blue selection is that saying that it's already on our cursor. If we clicked it, it wouldn't really change much in this case, but we want to come and click our axis. So we want to choose our Z axis. If we look up at our view cube, this is the Z axis and it'll create this kind of curled object here. If for some reason, if you accidentally click the wrong one, you don't have to cancel this out. You can actually come over here, click our little X, and re-click if you needed to, okay? We're not gonna do that, we wanna have our blue one, all right, but if you needed to, you could, all right? We can change the angle if we wanted it to be smaller. Right now we have a full, um, a full rotation, but again, we can change these as we see fit. Right now we need to have this be a new body since we don't have anything in this file yet. So we're gonna choose okay. All right, finally, our very last piece that we're gonna do is we are going to use our shell tool. So we haven't used too many things in our modify panel yet, but up in our modify panel, kind of in the middle, there's a box that looks like it has had pieces removed on the inside up here at the top. So it's like you're looking at an eggshell where the eggshell only has that outer edge um, around the shape. That's what we're trying, trying to make for our object here. So we're going to choose the shell tool. Okay, We're going to click on this angled surface that we made and we're going to change this to one millimeter. Okay, So what this is doing is it's cutting away all of the material on the inside and we just wanted to remove the face up at the top here. All right, so that's why we had clicked on that one. We can choose OK. And now we see this kind of open wheel type shape with a central axle tube in the middle. All right, we're going to choose our home view. We're going to save this. All right, remember to save your work. Oops. and save. All right, and that's it.